Half a mile from hell See that long train running Watch them disappear With that love Where would you be now? With that love Hello and welcome to the guitar department. I'm your host, Devon Miller. Today we are going to be looking at uh, a few new chords as well as some techniques on how to improve your uh, solos uh, when using the pentatonic scale that we talked about in the uh, last episode. But before we get started, let's make sure that we're in tune together. So I'm going to give you my uh, first string or high E string. And here's the second string or B string. the third string or G string. Fourth string or D string. Fifth string or A string. And finally the sixth string or low E string. So now we are going to take a look at what's called seventh chords and particularly dominant seventh chords. Now uh, the reason that they call them a seventh chord is uh, kind of gets into music theory a little bit and how chords are built. Uh, so if we would take a, a major scale in the case of or in this case, we're going to do a C major scale. Uh, so we'll start on a C. Uh, C you know, this would be Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So if we put a number with each one of those notes, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so a C chord would be built from the first note, which is C, the third note, which is an E and the fifth note, which is a G. Now to play all of those notes together on a guitar, we're going to move uh, those around a little bit. So we're going to put our C here. We're going to put our E here. And we're going to put our G there with the open G string. Now of course this shape may look familiar because if we just add the high C up here and strum the open high E string, we get our C major chord that we learned all the way back in the first episode. Now to build a seventh uh, chord, we would need to add the seventh note of the scale, which three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be a B note. So again, if we're going to play it all together, let's put the B down here at the open B string. Plays that, play that together, and that kind of adds some tension to the chord. Uh, it kind of sounds unresolved. And they call uh, seventh chords kind of a leading chord or leading tone because it wants to lead into a more natural chord, like a C, to kind of resolve that tension. Now, dominant seventh chords. Um, take uh, the note that is just below that natural seventh. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So there would be the dominant seventh, which in this case is a B flat. So in order to play that all together, we are going to add that B flat to our C. play that together. Now that also sounds unresolved, but it uh, kind of gives it a bit of a minor or bluesy flavor, but still leads into um, resolving to the natural chord. 
Now you'll see a natural seventh chord written out in sheet music as whatever the letter of the chord is, so in this case a C, then followed by the letters M, A, J for major, and then the number seven, which would give us the um, natural seventh or major seventh chord, which is that one. A dominant seventh would be written as the letter of the chord, so in this case C, and just the number seven. So that would indicate a dominant seventh chord shape that we learned a couple episodes ago where we bar across all six strings, middle finger on the G string, uh, ring finger on the A string, and uh, pinky finger on the D string. And we can make that a major, or a, we can make that a seventh chord by simply lifting our pinky. And that gives us a dominant seventh chord. And of course we can move that shape all the way up and down the neck and we get, um, we can play any of the dominant seventh chords um, that there are. And of course we can also make that minor by simply lifting our middle finger as well. And of course minor seventh chords would be written the letter of the chord. So in this case a G, a, a lowercase m, and the number seven. A good example of a popular song that uses um, dominant seventh chords is Can't Buy Me Love by the Beatles. Buy you diamond ring my friend if it makes you feel alright Get you anything, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. I don't care too much for money, money can't buy me love. And of course we can also build uh, dominant seventh chords using the other bar chord shape that we learned uh, based off the A string. So if we would bar across all of the strings except for the low E, put our ring finger two frets up on the D string and our pinky two frets up on the B and leave the leave the G string um, playing the barred note and then we play all the strings except the low E in this case that would give us a C uh, dominant seventh chord and we can make that minor as well by taking the minor chord shape of that which is basically the E bar chord shape, just everything moved down one fret, or one string, sorry, and play all the strings except for the low E. We get our minor, lift our pinky, and we get our minor seventh chord. And of course we can move both of these shapes up and down the neck and play any of the dominant major and minor seventh chords that there are. Some other examples of songs that use dominant seventh chords are the uh, long train running that I uh, opened the segment with. So you got uh, your G dominant seventh playing up here. And then we go down to the C dominant seventh. And then back up to the G. And we're just playing the dominant, lifting our hand to play like a, you know, a small bar chord there on each one of those. And then uh, also the song um, Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan also uses a uh, dominant seventh. I heard about a love sight to the blind. My baby's love caused the sun to shine. She's my sweet little thing. She's my pride and joy She's my sweet little baby I'm that little lover boy Now of course there are uh, many other shapes that you can use to play uh, major sevenths, minor sevenths, and dominant seventh chords. 
and we may go over those in a future episode. Uh, but for now, we are going to take a short break, but please stay tuned because we will be right back with more from the guitar department. Well, my baby and me went out late Saturday night. I had my hair piled high, my baby, she looked so right. Well, pick you up, ten, gotta have you home by two. Mama, don't know what I got, so for you, well, that's all right, because we're looking as cool as can be. Welcome back to the guitar department. I'm your host, Devon Miller. Now let's talk about chord structure, because um, there are some basic patterns that a lot of songs are built around, um, and the most common pattern is what's known as a 1-4-5 chord structure. Now what that basically means is, is that if we have a C major scale that we've been working off of, and we take the first note, which is C. That tells us that the one chord for that chord progression is a C major chord. Now to figure out what the four chord would be, we're going to count up from C to the fourth note of that scale. C, D, E, F. So one, two, three, four. That gives us an F note. So that tells us that an F chord is the four chord. Now, if, if you haven't guessed already, we are going to figure out the five chord by counting up to the fifth note of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. And that gives us a G note, which tells us that the fifth chord, or five chord, of the one, four, five is a G chord. Now, if we play those three chords together, You can hear the pattern. Now I'm sure you've heard that pattern many, many times. Um, it's used in hundreds, if not thousands, of songs. You know, like La Bamba, for instance. And we can, of course, use this same pattern in any key. So let's uh, let's move to A. So we got A, an A scale. Our first note is A, so that gives us. Uh, the one chord, which is an A major chord. And then we're going to count up four. One, two, three, four. And that gives us a D note, so D would be our four chord. And then we count up uh, five notes. One, two, three, four, five. And that gives us an E note, which gives us an E chord. And now we've got our one, four, five for the key of A. A, D, E. And, you know, that works in songs like Johnny Be Good and so on and so on. Now, using our bar chord shapes, we can um, find a pattern so that we don't have to count all the notes of the scale to figure out what the chords are. So let's uh, stay in A, and we're going to play our A bar chord, which is based off the E string. So bar all of the strings. Middle finger is going to be one fret up on the G string. Ring finger is going to be two frets up on the A, and pinky is going to be two frets up on the D string. We're going to play all six strings. That's our A bar chord. Now we're going to switch to get the four chord we are going to switch to our other bar chord shape, barring, again, keeping our finger on the fifth fret. We're not moving that at all. And then we're going to take our ring finger, and we're going to bar the two frets up. We're going to bar the D, G, and B strings. 
and strum every string except the low E. That gives us our D chord, which is our four chord. And now to get the five chord, we are just going to slide that whole pattern up two frets. And that gives us our E chord, which is our five chord. And of course, you can move that, that pattern up and down the neck. And you'll get one, four, five, um, no matter where you're playing. And of course, it works for the power chords that we learned as well. It's even easier because you're just uh, using two fingers and then you just shift those two fingers up uh, each a string and then move it up two frets. And that gives you your pattern. And of course we can use it in reverse if we start on a chord which is based on the A string bar chord. So in this case we'll do D. So we'll start on the fifth fret, bar two frets up on the D, G, and B strings. So that gives us our D chord. That's our one chord, so now to get the five chord, we're going to move up to the E bar shape. That gives us our five, and then we move two frets down, and that gives us our four chord. So one, five, four. And of course you can use that on the power chords as well. Now there are, of course, so many songs that use this 1-4-5 chord progression. Uh, just a few examples uh, that I've played in previous episodes, you know, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. Both lie silent still in the dead of the night. Both lie close together, we feel miles apart inside. Something I said or something I did, did my words not come out right? Though I tried not to hurt you, though I tried. But I guess that's why they say every rose has its thorn. And, uh, you know, the Joker. And, you know, as I said before, La Bamba, Twist and Shout, um, you know, Louie Louie can be thrown in there. Uh, and, you know, Johnny Be Good, Rock This Town that I played before. And then, of course, there's thousands of country songs uh, that use that 1-4-5 chord progression, um, you know, like The Gambler. On a warm summer's evening, on a train bound for nowhere, met up with a gambler, we were both too tired to sleep. So we... And, uh, you know, even more blues songs, like, you know, The Sky is Crying. The sky is crying. Can you see the tears roll down the street? The sky is crying. Can you see the tears roll down the street? I've been looking for my baby and I wonder Now, we are going to take a short break, but uh, please stay tuned, because we will be right back with more from the guitar department. Little ditty about Jack and Diane, two American kids growing up in the heartland. Jackie going to be a football star, Diane debutante backseat of Jackie's car. Long after the thrill 
of living is gone. Oh yeah, life goes on long after the thrill of living is gone. Welcome back to the guitar department. Once again, I'm your host, Devon Miller. Now let's take a look at a couple of techniques that will help your uh, solo playing uh, when playing the pentatonic uh, scales that we learned in our last episode. Um, string bending and what is commonly referred to as the blues note. So string bending is what sets the guitar apart um, from most instruments. Uh, bending a string will put so much emotion into your guitar playing and your soloing. Um, now, of course, you can bend any note that you're playing, but the most common notes that most guitar players bend can be found uh, right in the middle of our pentatonic minor scale that we learned in our last episode. So let's uh, start on the A string on the low E. Uh, so it'd be fifth fret, low E. And if we play up that pattern, so fifth fret E, eighth fret E, fifth fret A, 7th fret A, 5th fret D, 7th fret D, 5th fret G, 7th fret G. Now this is the note that we're going to bend. Now you can use whatever technique is com most comfortable for you, but I typically try to get as many fingers behind the note that I'm bending as I can uh, to kind of give that, that finger some support so that it's not trying to do all the work itself. And you want to bend up. And the ultimate goal is to get that, get that raised pitch to match the same note that's on the fifth fret of the B string. Now a good exercise to practice this uh, bending technique is if you start on the 5th fret of the G string and then do this fret the 7th fret and then bend and then release and then back to the 5th fret of the G string. Now, of course, you've probably heard that uh, in several solos that you've heard on the radio, but uh, that's a good uh, exercise. Another note that uh, is commonly bent on uh, guitar solos can be found just a couple of more notes higher. So if we continue up our pattern from the seventh fret of the G, then we go to the fifth fret of the B string, to the eighth fret of the B string, I remember I told you before to play that with your pinky. And that is another note that you can bend up. And the ultimate goal is to get the, to be the same note as the fifth fret of the high E string. Now, if it's too hard to bend that with your pinky, even with all the other fingers behind, you can switch that note to play with your ring finger again. Now depending on what type of musical style you're playing will affect how you bend the string. If you're playing country, you definitely want a very exact kind of, you know, almost mechanical sound to the bend. You know, kind of like you're stepping on the pedal of a pedal steel guitar. You know, that kind of thing. Whereas if you're playing blues, uh, you want it to be a little more loose and less exact. You know, maybe even kind of shake the bend a little bit, put some vibrato in there. And of course, Rock kind of falls in between, uh, but definitely takes a lot of cues from uh, the blues.
So the last thing that I wanted to talk about today is um, what is called the blues note. Now that can also be found in our minor pentatonic shape. Again, if we start on the A uh, note, the low E string, fifth fret, and walk up the pattern. So fifth fret, eighth fret, uh, fifth fret of the A string. And then the blues note is the one that is in between the fifth fret of the A string and the seventh fret of the A string. It's that one. So if we add that into our scale pattern, five, eight, five, six, seven, five, seven. And that kind of gives it a little bit of a, you know, a little bit more of a minor feel. And then if we keep going up, we can find another uh, blues note. So fifth fret, seventh fret of the G, and there's the blues note again, an octave higher. So. And then we can continue up, fifth fret of the B, eighth fret, fifth fret of the high E, eighth fret of the high E. So to play the pattern all the way up and down. There's our blues note. There's our blues note again. Blues note. Blues note. Now, a little, uh, oh, by the way, when we were bending that note, that's the note we're kind of bending around, is that blues note. So, just a little tip there for you. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Uh, I hope you're finding this series informative as well as entertaining. And I hope you're enjoying your musical journey uh, that we're taking uh, together on the guitar. So, once again, my name is Devon Miller for the Guitar Department, and we will see you next time.